Nerd family, welcome once again to the Point Extra Lounge. My name is Enosh, aka Enosh Fett. Y'all know me. I've been around here, kind of been around the channel since the beginning, I guess. And of course, with me is my lovely wife. Tiptastic. That's right. And today I am excited because it is yet another opportunity to bring together the Poindexter Council. Yes, these minds that think in ways that just would totally destroy any plot or plan the Legion of Doom could possibly come up with. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, it is the Poindexter Council. Welcome, Council. Thank, Thank you. you of course, today we have Jason. Hi there. We've got Caleb. What's up? We've got Harrison. What's up? We've got Zach. Greetings and salutations. And of course, we have Johnny. Hello, hello. Welcome. I'll tell you what, you will never find a better group of, uh, of nerdy people who have such knowledge of comic books and pop culture unless you, you pay them. So anyways, <laughs> we are going to jump right in, folks. Uh, we Wait, hope we're not getting enjoying. paid. What's that? Right. We're not getting paid. <laughs> We'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> well, folks, hey, if this is your first time to the lounge, just know this. The Point Extra Lounge is a place for nerds. It's a place where we can get together and we can talk about all the things that we love. And so uh, we love nerdy things and pop culture stuff, comic books, TV shows, movies, all that stuff. And so we're glad that you're with us today. We also want to invite you that if you have um, thoughts on the topics that we cover here uh, in the Point Dexter uh, Council, please let us know that uh, we you can find us on social media everybody's gonna have their uh, their their places you can find them on social media and you can tell them what you think of their opinion you can you can totally tell uh, tell Jason that he's totally wrong about Superman and we're gonna do that in another uh, video but no we're you can you can you can harass people not too much you know don't give them too much heart just in love you know in that nerdy <laughs> kind of love but uh, but all that is gonna be there and of course also down in the description below you can find all those links and we welcome your opinions we also welcome your topic ideas. If you guys have things mm -hmm. that have just been questions that have been burning in your mind, we would love to uh, to give you what you want. All right, today, Council, I call this this meeting of the Poindexter Council to order. Today's discussion: inspiration. Writers rely on it to bring us the stories, books, comic books, movies, TV shows, and media that we take in. Every story began with someone or some group sitting down and telling that story. They then capture it in some format and pursue it further. From there, it grows and blooms into something more. Comic books have provided enough stories that we could literally not produce another comic book and yet have enough stories to fuel movies, TV shows, and comic books for years and years to come. Many comic storylines have been adapted for movies and live action projects, and some have even been made several times over, but not quite done well or close enough to the source material. Yet, there are a plethora of comic stories that have never been told at all in a live action or even animated form. Today, we have assembled the council to speak to what our favorite comic book storylines are and which ones we would like to see adapted to a live action format whether for the first time or that we feel have not been quite done right yet. This is, this is the discussion presented to you, the Poindexter Council, today. Do I have a motion for support? Motion. Yep. motion. All right. Then we may proceed. Let us proceed. All right. Tiftastic. <laughs> you have the floor. Ladies first. Yes. Right. Well, thank you. Um, I actually was going back and forth between two topics that I thought that I would like to bring uh, to adaptation. And I think um, since I got a taste of it during crisis, the one thing that I would love to be brought to light, they've done a bunch of different, you know, ways that they've done Superman with a bunch of different types of Superman. Um, but I actually really liked Kingdom Comes Superman adaptation that Brandon Routh did for crisis. Mm -hmm. So I think I would actually like to keep Brandon Routh because he did so well, but I would love to see a series or a short series or even a Netflix eight episode, you know, arc, um, especially with him having to leave legends with his wife and it's not something he wanted to do. Yeah. And so he has the time. He has the love of Superman. He loves the fact that he was given that chance and opportunity during crisis. So to me, that's uh, an adaptation that I think would be awesome that 
we really haven't seen a ton of if it wasn't an animation. I'm talking more live, you know, yeah. person. Uh, they, don't, they haven't really even done an animation of, of Kingdom Come. Yeah, um, I mean, they haven't done a, a ton, so I think that would be an awesome platform. The other one that I was actually kind of going back and forth with was also the Tower of Babel with um, the JLA. Oh, and uh, this, this that would be See, she knows her stuff. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. Can, can I have a better wife? I mean, come on. <laughs> so I think that that would be cool. I mean, we've seen some, you know, cartoons and some, you know, things that they brought that up in. We've seen yeah. that in the past. But I think a modern day with the right Batman, you could see a lot of emotion mm -hmm. get, given the right, you know, actors, even the ones that we have mm -hmm. now. Um, but I just think mm -hmm. a real life adaptation of that would be really, really cool. I, yeah. yeah. Wow. Those are both, she those was are both great choices. Sometime, folks. Uh, man, the Kingdom Come thing. I, you know, Kingdom Come is 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 such an intricate story. Mm -hmm. You know. And even if you take a couple movies to explain it, go ahead. I mean, that would just mm -hmm. give us more. Do, yeah, it, do a trilogy. A, heck yeah. Yeah. It, it is really a huge, huge story. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Man, man, you know, like wow, you just kind of hit me with that because. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the, the possibility, especially with crisis, like you said, kind of alluding to the fact that the Christopher Reeve Superman mm -hmm. basically became. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kingdom comes. Right. Superman. Yeah. You yeah. know, right. absolutely. Um, and you saw in crisis how he was with his Lois too. And it's just, you I mean, you can really play off of that too. I mean, you can, there's just a yeah. lot that they could really take from that mm. or put both of them together. Tower of Babel with Kingdom Come. Well, Jason, Jason, what do you think? I mean, because because I know you're a big Superman fan like me. Like yep. Kingdom Come presents Superman in a kind of a different different way. It's it's I I, I always like the stories, and and maybe it's just me. I know I like I know some people who grew up with Superman. They kind of like their Superman to be more kind of kid friendly, right. kind of you know. Uh, saving kitty cats up in trees, and you know, and putting out fires and stuff like that. Um, but I really like when Superman deals with very serious issues and, and is told in a grown up way. Yes. You know, and, and like these, these things that super, cause there's so many, there's so many stories about, about things, you know, that any hero could do. His human versus right. God side. Right. That any hero right. could take care of. But then, and you kind of alluded to it in the, in the last, uh, I think it was you who alluded to it in the last uh, council. And that was that, like Superman when facing dark side in, um, in the justice yeah. cartoon. And he says, and he's, you know, telling you, you know, dark side's kind of, you know, trashing him, you know, trash talking him and stuff. And he basically just tells dark side, you know, look, um, yeah, y'all don't realize that I hold back on everybody. I am yeah. not trying to hurt anybody. Um, but with you, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to bring it. And so, yeah. Uh, I like those stories. What, what do you think about yeah. that? I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, I, I, you know, the, the character is such an interesting character. It's one of the reasons I gravitated towards him. Um, the burdens on Superman are so much different than any other superhero. Uh, a, like, like we talked about with the whole idea of ha always constantly having to hold back, knowing that if he loses control even for a second, he could literally split the planet in half. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So that constant war within himself, don't let go, don't let go, don't let go, is so impressive. And the, the burden of, on top of that, being the only one who can do those things. Mm -hmm. so how do you know when to use them you know it, you can't you can't have superman punch lex luther obviously yeah um he, he, he's he's the type of character that could solve all the problems immediately in the dc universe if he was so inclined to do so like in the the injustice storyline yeah um but he also knows that if he goes down that road even a little bit there's no way for him to ever come back so I, I think, you know, he's he's an inherently hopeful character, but there's always that darkness behind him because everyone likes to talk about Batman's dark origins. Well, it's like Superman's whole planet was destroyed. He's, is, you know, especially when you first meet him, he thinks he's the only one left. Obviously, we know about um, some survivors like Zod and Kara, but even then, you're talking about three or four people out of your entire planet that's left. So, right. 
you know, he's got every bit as dark an or- origin as the bat and has way more burdens on him than the bat. So I, I like a story that approaches Superman in a thoughtful, mature, adult way, because that's, that's really what the character should be. Yeah. And we saw how that could go in the adaptation of Brightburn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Bright, oh, yeah. Brightburn, Brightburn is something, I mean, we could, we could touch on it, but I, I definitely would love to do an episode just on Brightburn. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, it, it explored so many things about Superman that what are just left unsaid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's, uh, and it, you talk about dark. but it's it's and i mean that movie that film had problems but it was it was a very i liked it for what it was oh absolutely the what if aspect of superman yes that's that's you know we got a little bit of that in uh in red sun and i hope i'm not stepping on anybody's toes for a potential adaptation here but uh you know that still i think red sun didn't go quite far enough because it still had the idea of superman being Good. Helpful and, and good. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, let well, people – go Go ahead. Well, go ahead. I was say, that's the thing. Like, is Superman inherently this awesome, amazing Boy Scout? Or is it the people around him that right. want him to be that because, you know, secretly they're afraid of what he could do if they didn't praise him that way? You know what I mean? Like, mm. oh, you're, you're this amazing, wonderful, always a do-gooder. You know, but right. I mean, there's I mean, how, you can hmm. really explore some cool themes that way. How much of it is the Kents being good people? How much of it is, you know, I would have loved to have seen at some point them as soon as they really started understanding the extent of Superman's abilities and powers, show a conversation with them. Like we have got to make him a good person. Right. We have no choice. If we don't, the world is doomed. If he comes out well, like. A bad guy, what What do we do? And I think you see some of that, not necessarily in Superman, but definitely in Homelander from the boys, where it's this, you know, it's this Superman-esque character who's just full-on narcissist, who yeah. wants the praise, wants to be the hero, but in reality will do anything to make sure he comes out looking like the hero. Now, how is that? Because right. I don't have, I don't have Amazon, so, but I've heard a lot of really good things about the show. It's, it's dark. Is it? It's dark. So, yeah. Yeah, it, we like dark. So, right. So that's cool. I, yeah. We, we've got every other subscription and stuff. Like, I had Amazon for like the longest time and I finally let it go. And then of course they started putting out a couple of things that I actually might want to see. And I was just like, right. uh, no, just, I did the exact same thing. As soon as they announced they were doing that Lord of the Rings thing, I was like, Oh, now I'm going to have to get Amazon back. <laughs> But no, I think I think it's a lot of a lot of really good points. I mean, um, about Superman, just about different characters. I mean, we saw a little bit of that in Crisis, where, where you know, he's lost everything. You know, yeah. he's lost everyone important to him in the Kingdom Come storyline. And yeah. uh, what does that do to somebody? How does that? How does, you know? Orgot. How does that change him? You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, he starts wearing the the black uh, field behind the S. And um, right. it just, it, it changes him from the inside, you know? And uh, I, I always love that too. And, and, I, and this isn't really going to be a Superman episode. I mean, unless everybody has a Superman thing, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just feel like, like Superman, I, I think people get uncomfortable when, when stories start being told about Superman that make him more human and, and, and actually like bring up these hard questions about mm-hmm. Superman because people don't really, because like, I think Johnny was, was it Johnny was saying or, or whatever that like people don't want to talk about that. They kind of want to, you know, like, no, nah, Superman's just like big boy. Scott. He's, he's a good guy. Like we love Superman. I think about like when your boss is around, right. And you're just like, Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. This was really great or whatever. You know, then they walk away and you're just like, dang, I'm a big dork. Like, why can't I just talk to this person like a normal human being, right? And, you know, but right. you, you feel that way when you're around like a celebrity or, you know, if you ever met a celebrity or you meet somebody like important or whatever, all of a sudden you start to clam up and you get like tongue tied, you know, and stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, imagine if Superman were real. That's, mm-hmm. 
that right there. Your pants. Oh my God. That's one of the reasons why I love, love Man of Steel because the first part of that movie, but, I mean, cause he's not really Superman in that movie. Right. He's discovering right. who he is and the world is discovering who he is. And I love it because every time, you know, look, I love, I love Superman, the movie mm-hmm. with Christopher Reeve, but let's be realistic in our world today, even back then in the real world, some guy starts flying around, has these oh, super yeah. abilities. You find out he's an alien. I mean, there's yeah. so many things that you got first contact. You get, you got, you know, godlike human ability. You got guy defying the, the laws of nature and of science and everything. And we're just all like, yay, Superman. This is a great guy because <laughs> he's wearing bright colors and he saved the girl. And, you know, right. no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Instant mistrust. Instant, Instant mistrust. mistrust. That's why I love Batman v Superman because I think that movie makes people feel uncomfortable because it's not what they want to see. They don't right, want right. to see that side of it. They want to see, and maybe people weren't ready for that. Yeah. But I get it, man. When, when, and, and we're going to move on. But, but in Brightburn, <laughs> Brightburn totally proves the fact of why Bruce Wayne says in Batman v Superman to Alfred. If there's a one percent chance mm-hmm. that he is we have here to take it as an absolute, us, yep. we got to take him out because I got yep. like this is my legacy. This is what I have to do to save the world, not Gotham City, but the world. Because he was sitting right. there, he was sitting there watching the whole thing crumble in Metropolis and almost watched the whole world get terraformed and taken over. Right. Um, you got to do something about that. You right. can't just you know. Right. Um, Bruce, it doesn't matter if it's Superman or Zod. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Caleb Harrison, you guys got anything on this? You got you guys kind of nodding. You look like you agree with us. So I, I want to make sure that you guys uh, have something to say. Caleb, you're, on you're, muted. you're on mute. Ah, man. Caleb's the first to do it. You're on mute, buddy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying that when you were saying about geeking out about Superman. That just reminded me of the first scene of Justice League. Uh, uh, CGI aside, that was that was perfect. That was a perfect scene. Oh, with him talking? Yeah, with yeah, with on the cell phone thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, are you wanting to go back to the uh, like storyline thing, or are we still talking about Superman? Whatever it's it's. Uh, well, I I was just wondering your opinion about about the Kingdom Come thing. Oh yeah, so um, I've not really watched Crisis or anything, so okay, uh, not applicable. Gotcha. <laughs> That's all good, man. It's all good. Like I said, I haven't watched The Boys, so I know that like when you haven't seen something, it you know you can't consume everything. You can try. Yeah, right? there's gonna end up being something, right? And so you have to yeah. work vicariously through others. So yeah. so I totally get that. All right. Well, hey Tiff, good job. Good yeah, good job, Tiff. Those were so that was awesome. With uh, things, I'm working and everything during the day, so I come up with my own. We don't talk about it before the show. That way, we can kind of not have to play off each other's stuff or have the same thing. Yeah. We don't good, talk. Good job. Good job. <laughs> good job. Um, all right. Hey, speaking of Harrison, well, Harrison, let's go to you then, buddy. What is your adaptation that you would like to see? Um, well, I'm not a huge comic book reader, so I'm just gonna kind of tell you guys something that I would like to see some something that I would like to see happen um I am a Fantastic Four fan um so I would like to see Galactus come in in the MCU um and I would like to see uh that come into play so and I'm just gonna kind of say that just kind of the icing on the cake uh and I don't know what um goes into all the Galactus things or, but I've, I've heard that Galactus is this like godlike being in this. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I he's not a cloud. It. He's not a fart cloud. <laughs> yeah. not a fart cloud I, I do know that. I do know. I do know that much. That was parallax. <laughs> That's parallax. I'm sorry. Parallax yeah. is the fart uh, cloud. Uh, and uh, two fart clouds yeah. apparently. Yeah. yeah. That movie, that movie just didn't happen. <laughs> Look, there are some things about the Green Lantern movie that are really, really good. And then the bad things are just really, really bad. No yeah. Problem. Yes. Fart, fart Cloud being one of them, for oh. sure. Man. Yeah. Oh. But no, I. Uh, 
Uh, Fantastic Four, man. You know, like, I feel like, I feel like with Fantastic Four, we just, th- th- that's perfect for this topic. Mm-hmm. Because it's something now that we've gotten officially two iterations of. If, if you go back and you watch the bootleg, which is, yeah. by the way, if you haven't <laughs> watched that, you guys got to watch the bootleg Fantastic Four movie because was that Roger Corman that did that? Yes, yes. it's it's pretty yeah. great. Oh, I've got I've got a copy of it, but it's, it's also worth seeing. Also once. Like, if you ever want to have some fun, download the Tubi app. There is a documentary all about that movie and about the making of that movie, and it <laughs> talks to the cast. It talks to the people who made that. Nobody who worked on that movie knew that it was fake. They all really? thought that this was their big break, that this was going yeah. to be a huge movie, that they were working on something real. None of them realized that, that Roger Corman just had the rights and didn't want them to, to, to go away. So he knew that he had to start production on a movie by a certain time to be able to retain the rights. Nobody associated with the film knew that. And, I had no idea. And it's it's a fantastic uh, documentary because you just see these people just talking from their hearts. They're just like you feel so bad for them because they're just like I I was giving it my best. Yeah. Well, the crazy think- thing is the thing looks as good in the Roger Corman thing as the uh, yeah Jessica Alba fan Fantastic Four. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and the deal with the Fantastic Four is too is I I read so many of those books. I mean, even going all the way back to to the ones that came out in the 60s and all that, I picked up, years ago, I had picked up a bunch at a comic book or at a, at a garage sale for like a dime a piece. And they were falling apart, but they were like the early first run, you know, issues from the Fantastic Four, hundreds of them. And, and so I'm just going through all these as a little kid. And, and I liked them, but the thing that always struck me, anytime I see the Fantastic Four on screen, It's like they're trying to pluck these people out of this comic book who were created in the 60s and then just plop them into today, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, just the whole team dynamic and the whole, you know, we, their creation in this, you know, the space race to get up and investigate this first. I mean, it's just very it seems dated. And I mean, there's, I think that it could be done somehow by somebody more creative than me, I guess, you know, to bring them and Galactus into the MCU. But it just, it's always seemed like strange that, you know, it's like these characters. I mean, if you want to do something cool, make it a period movie. I mean, we did it with, uh, you know, uh, Oh, I'm drawing a blank here. Captain America. Uh, yeah, with Captain like Captain Marvel. America and Captain Wonder Marvel. Woman. Yeah, Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. I mean, I I don't think that Marvel would go that way, but I mean, it would be. It's just it it stinks, and then you see somebody that tried to modernize it with Josh Trank, and you know him using the Ultimate storyline, and ben then stick. Yeah, exactly. And there were pieces of that that worked. The first half of that movie was okay. Is yeah. Yeah. Is okay. The build up the build up of that movie is great, and then at the end it just falls apart. Yeah. yeah, it's like, and so you know, you where you try to modernize these characters, and so I, I think that's the problem with, you know, because Galactus for me is really tied to the Fantastic Four, and yeah. if if you're gonna bring him in, you've got to have them in there somehow. But how do you, how do you modernize that without it just falling apart? I mean, that's that's where I, I come off the rails on that a little bit. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, and Galactus. He does fit that mold of the threat that would require, you know, Avengers Assemble type of thing. Yeah. You know, they, they, they use Thanos to, 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 to great effect. Um, but the, I think the problem there is how do you just, how is it not a repeat of Thanos? Um, right. Yeah. You know, obviously he doesn't have, Galactus has no interest in um, Infinity Stones and, you know, you couldn't have introduced him before because Galactus could have just, you know, flicked Thanos away like a like a net. But um, he he does fit that. But that that also presents so many problems of, well, how 
without the Fantastic Four, the Silver Surfer, really in particular, how do you fight Galactus? And mm-hmm. you know, the Hulk isn't going to go punch Galactus in the face, right? That's not going to work very well. Thanos already showed that the Hulk could get beaten up, so I, you know. That, but but that's the type of fun thing that you could come up with. How do you work can you guys this? Hear in? me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, man. Yeah, we yeah. got chairs. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and I think that's why you know the fact that they're bringing in the Eternals now, who are yeah. gods themselves. So it could be interesting to see how that plays out. You know, so so maybe Harrison, maybe you'll get your your wish right there, and and Galactus will somehow make his way into the MCU. I think I don't see how he can. If if you bring in the Fantastic Four, you got it. Seems like you would have to eventually bring in Galactus. You have to. Yeah. You have the, the to. question. The question is, is like how d- you you look at like Fantastic Four two, right? Mm-hmm. Silver Surfer is so good in yeah. that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Yep. I mean, Silver Surfer looks good, sounds good, whatever. And then got the right vibe. Yeah. Yeah, and then you build up to Galactus, and it's like, yeah. What right? The so storm so question, in space. Yeah. So the, so the question is the question is is how? I'll give you an example. The first time I saw the first Hulk movie way back in the day with uh, Eric Bana, mm-hmm. I remember laughing at that movie. I was on the road with my band. We were in Wisconsin. We were all like, we we knew we had like a 12, 13 hour drive back home because we were coming back home. It was the last thing, and we were coming back home, and the Hulk came out that day and we were, and somebody goes, well, let's go see Hulk. And I remember my keyboard player did not want to go at all. He's like, I want to get home. I want to get back to my family. We're all like, Oh, it's just a couple hours. Let's go see Hulk. Right. So we convinced him and he, he did not want to go. We all go see Hulk and we walked out of that movie and he was so ticked. He didn't talk to us like for like another hour or something. Cause he was just like, I can't believe we wasted two hours instead of being on the road. We, we went and saw Hulk, but I remember that. What's that? He's like, you made me sit through that. Exactly. So we watched, but the problem was, was we were laughing at parts that we shouldn't have been laughing at. Right. Yeah. Like, like anytime Hulk would jump in that movie, I swear he looked like a, like a, the Jolly Green Giant, just like, like <laughs> jumping. And, and I remember like the choices, like in that movie, because like he was, he'd be standing like right here next to the camera and then they would just do one long scene where he would jump and he'd kind of be up here somewhere and they would just hold on that scene. They wouldn't do like a close up of him in the air. Enough. They would just hold on that scene until he's like way, 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 way back here. And I remember us just like laughing out loud. And there were some people, there was a couple in the, uh, in the theater that were kind of ticked off because we were laughing, but I'm just like, how is this so bad? So I say that because yeah. can you bring in a Galactus that is this huge dude in space that like can hold the earth in the palm of his hand without it looking absolutely ridiculous. It all depends on you have to build up to it. You have to create a world and a story that supports it. I really think so. I mean, you just can't, you know, it's kind of like when, Steppenwolf shows up there in the yeah. in, in the DC movies. It's kind of like okay, like I know who he is because I'm a nerd, right? But it's like right. my son who hasn't read all those books is like, is that Thanos? I'm confused. Like I'm just like, yeah, yeah Did you I know, see buddy. His size and everything compared to the other people, like even you know Superman. Even I mean, yeah, they the right you can do it with the animation and everything nowadays. Yeah, I mean he's 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 a big guy. My my concern is is like, can you have can you have Galactus be that size for the whole movie? Because like well, who's go, gonna fight it? Oh, go well, ahead. Going back to modernizing, you know, do you do you bring Galactus in as a you know six foot five or six foot seven man? Mm-hmm. But how and does Galactus dude, at six seven eat a planet? How does he eat the planet though? That's a, yeah. Maybe it's you know maybe it's maybe yeah. maybe we go Brainiac with it and his ship eats the planet. He just comes down. Ooh, maybe like his that. ship just looks like his head, like Brainiac. Ooh, nice. That would be good. Or maybe or he maybe he, he, maybe he has different forms. Right. Yeah. 
and he can change to a side. Like I'd be okay with that. Like I can see that. Like he's he's here. Yeah. He's interacting with everybody. He's fighting, there, and then but he can change for him. And maybe the whole point is Ant-Man to keep that. to keep him yeah, from changing like Ant Man. That's exactly what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe the whole point is to keep him from changing form because well, once it, he yeah. changes form, he's able to to do that. I think it'll be right, interesting yeah. to see. I think you'll get a taste of how marvel could handle galactus on screen when we yeah. see what they do with the eternals because the eternals are are you know they're heroes in these in the comics that cannot die i mean they always have like backup bodies and all sorts of different things right. like they they literally cannot die so Tell that's how you, yeah, yeah. How do you, well how do you make people in a movie audience who are not familiar with that material care about characters who can't be killed Right? right. How do you put them in a perilous situation? How do you humanize them enough to be believable for the hour and a half, two hours on screen? Mm-hmm. Right. So especially since it took Marvel so long to get to the point where they were actually willing to kill someone off. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I mean, that weren't villains. Right. And yeah. Still, for a while, for a while every Tony movie Stark. killed the villain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but they're still bringing back Tony Stark. Right? Yeah. Yeah, well, as a cameo, that's a huge mistake. It's it's still a mistake. Yeah, it just it shows that there's just no consequences. No, and that's 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 the that's the problem with 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 that right there. But all right, Harrison. Well, that was man. We're 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 two for two so far. I'll tell you what. We got we got Kingdom Come. We got a little bit of talk about Tower of Babel and Galactus. And man. Good, good, uh, good Marvel talk. You know, see, you guys can't say that that out there that, that we don't talk about that we're not well rounded. That's one of the reasons why, too. Like, I, I wanted to bring everybody in because I know that everybody's got different likes and stuff, and um, it's paying off. So there we go. All right, all right there we go. All right, hey Zach, we would love to hear from you here at the council. You have the floor. Uh, well, I would love so a couple things. Um, I have I have two, but I'll do them very quickly. Um, first of all, I would love to see Flashpoint. Mm. I know there's been some talk. I know that uh, the Ezra Miller Flash movie was supposed to be Flashpoint. That, of course, is now up in the air, if that's even going to happen or if they're going to yeah. switch and go with Wally West instead or whatever they're going to do. But the biggest reason for wanting to see um, Flashpoint with the current DCEU run is I think it would be cool to see Wonder Woman and Aquaman fighting each other. I think that would be fun. But most importantly, Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Thomas Wayne's Batman would just be, it would just be incredible. Awesome. Complete fan service. But I would just, I, I, so that's the biggest thing I'd love to see. Um, And I'd also love to see, I'd love to see Green Lantern done well. I know we, we, we joked about Green Lantern for a minute, but I'd love to see Nathan Fillion as Hal Jordan. He's voiced all the animated flicks. He's a little older, but I think it could be fun to not do an origin story, but do a established an established DL. character. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and just bring in yeah, probably Sinestro because you almost have to, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Um, but, but still I'm coming back. Well, yes, right. I mean, you know, why not? We're just going to put him in every DC movie. That's the right. <laughs> so you just well, do flashpoint. Did. You just do flashpoint. Right. And then that just change. You can jumble up anything you want to. Well, yeah. And that's really, you know, everything that I had read, it said flashpoint was going to be the thing that was going to pull wonder yeah. woman and Robert Pattinson's Batman and some of the others all together into one universe and maybe you know a new superman actor if if henry cavill exits so that's where i think flashpoint makes total sense for wb to do because they need they have all these different you know they have all these different strands of storylines that they need to try to bring together i mean that's what dc used it for yeah right so so anyways the thing is is they have that built in where they can do that right? right So, you know, so like, it, it, yeah, they've made some mistakes and they've made some, you know, trips along the way. But you, when you have something like that now, once you do that, if you don't put out something good, you know, then right. I guess then I guess you got to do like a, a crisis thing. And <laughs> try to, but see, that's the great thing about D.C. is like they can make mistakes. And they could just like, there yeah. it is. We're going to do and the reverse right. storyline. 
Comic book right. direct comic. The crisis. <laughs> right. Caleb, you had something there, bud? Yeah, I just think he's going to get uh, that. You're going to get your wish with Green Lantern because he's got a new HBO Max show coming up. I saw which that. Which, according yeah. to rumors, is going to be in the DCEU. Yeah. That's an interesting. That. That's an interesting take on that. Now, what would you think for the Lantern about doing Blackest Night? Ooh. It'd be cool. Yep. It'd be it'd be a huge story though. It'd you'd be... you'd have to do it over several movies. You couldn't oh, do yeah. it. You oh. couldn't do just one. You, and then you'd have to follow it up with Brightest Day. So right. you know, but that is such an amazing storyline. And the yeah. the emotional impact. I mean, you'd have to set it up with a couple of things first. Right. Obviously, Bruce Wayne mm-hmm. dead, um, and all that. But just to see some of these characters that we know and love, right, turned into basically zombies is it'd be I, it'd be a great. Awesome. I think that's something you could do on like an HBO Max where you had. You know, you could do a whole season where you have 10 episodes to do that. Yeah. And, and even maybe play it in like a future timeline where those heroes are all already dead. So you don't necessarily even have to build them up emotionally. You can say, you know, the age of heroes is over. They're all dead. Mm-hmm. And then this Black and, Blackest Night storyline comes along and resurrects all these heroes in tattered versions of their costumes. It could be fun. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about even like trying to introduce necessarily like martian manhunter into it right he could just be like dead already yeah right and, and then bring him back you know because you know so. some of these and characters that we all know and love that haven't been introduced yet right yeah. and i think especially that's where i love the the long play especially on the digital medium the, the 10 episode arcs mm-hmm. you can do so much cool stuff that you can't cram into a two and a half three hour movie oh absolutely so, so true or a 23 hour 23 hour season Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's so uh, many filler episodes. Yeah, I, I, I think that's great. I, I, I personally would love to see a really good Green Lantern something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any anything at this point. Yeah, you know, because like I was I was so excited when when the Green Lantern movie was coming out. So was I. Was I. Well, I you know, I, I wasn't convinced of Ryan Reynolds. Sure. Just, just because of just because of who he is. I like Ryan Reynolds. Um, he's, born right. he's born to play right. Deadpool for yeah, sure. Right. Uh, but you know, I don't know. I always look at, I was, Hal Jordan is my green lantern. Yeah. And I always looked at Hal Jordan almost more like the adult in the room. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and maybe that's just from like watching super <clears throat> friends and, and everything, but he always seems like this, like very serious guy. Like even on like, I remember watching super friends back in the day and like, he was more serious than Superman, Batman, all of them. Like anytime right, right. Green Lantern said something, it was like, "No, we must do this," and you know, blah blah blah. And it was like, "Oh, okay. because so he, he has to be cop. in control." Yeah, well, he's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, he's right? a cop, but, and he's got to be in control in order to use the, you know, his power. You know, he's got to be in control of his will and everything else. So he's. Yeah, and he's, I agree with you about Sinestro because I feel that like there were enough good parts of that, of that Green Lantern movie where if you, if you had made it about Sinestro bringing in Hal Jordan, teaching yeah. Hal Jordan, and then trying to convince Hal Jordan to go with him mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, get the yellow ring and, and do all that stuff. Right. And, and Hal just going, hey, you, you've taught me. Like, have it be like this heartbreaking thing in, in the mm-hmm. middle of it where it's like Hal Jordan is like, what are you doing? You know, kind of like the Padme thing. You're going down a road. I, I can't go. I can't You're breaking, breaking my heart. heart. <laughs> <laughs> you have know, done that it. yourself. But, you know, but seriously, like, I could totally see that where, where Ryan Reynolds could have played that and then it just right. takes a serious turn. You know, everything's lighthearted, you know, and you got your, mm-hmm. your, your moments and stuff between him and mm-hmm. Sinestro and Sinestro trying to teach him. And then all of a sudden that moment takes and, and Sinestro is, is somebody that – he feels like he's doing some good. Like he feels like he's doing something Mm -hmm. that needs to be done. And Hal's just telling him like, look, you can't do that. You know, that's not the way to deal with this. And that starts that war and that puts them together. The the greatest tragedy of Green Lantern movie of the Green Lantern movie that I think personally is not the fart cloud is not the, the egghead bad 
costuming and all that stuff. Uh, is, I know it's not Egghead, but uh, what's his name? I just I I cringe every time I see. He he looks so bad. Peter yeah. Sarsgaard's character. Peter yeah. Sarsgaard. Yeah. yeah. I just oh man I oh I just can hardly look at it. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. It's so uh, bad. But like even beyond that, I mean, those are bad parts of a of a movie, right? right. Mm-hmm. But those uh, those could be forgiven. If it wasn't for the fact that at the end, Mark Strong was such a good Sinestro yes. and he puts mm-hmm. on that yellow ring and it's like, there it is. It's the potential. And we're never going to see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It would have been cool to see, even if you kept the, the parallax storyline to make that kind of an end of the first act, kind of, he's just figuring out, he comes in cause he defeats him pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, it's not even that long of a battle. Like, he right. defeats him, you know, the core accepts Hal Jordan as the lantern, and then, you know, the rest of the movie is transitioning Sinestro to be the main villain. It would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought the Parallax story was too early. I would have rather saved it for when Hal Jordan got infected with Parallax. Yeah. After Mongol and uh, Cyborg Superman mm-hmm. um, destroy his city. Um I, I felt like that would have been a, a much more emotionally impactful storyline than just to have the fart cloud parallax. Right. You know, yeah. have it have have that and then try to have Hal Jordan's redemption. It would have been a great story arc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would have made for good good movie. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Hmm. Yeah, I um we we definitely gotta get that at some point. We got we gotta get something Green Lantern. They gotta get Green Lantern right. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. it's it's too important to the to the DC universe. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was your other one again? Flashpoint. Fla- oh Flashpoint, yeah, Flashpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just I I could see that working together. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I I really think Flashpoint. You, you if you get Flashpoint right, you can reboot this thing. Mm-hmm. Get it on the right path. Be able to bring it. Like even if you wanted, well, Mark Strong has already been. Uh, now in the DCEU, but right. uh, which you know, I'll say Flash, Flashpoint. Though that as that part, I, I like him as Doctor Savannah too. He, I think he did yeah. a. I, I I like that movie. I like Shazam. So oh um, yeah, yeah, that was good. I and and awesome. I loved Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so like you got that's and that's the problem they got is they've got like these properties. So they got they got Wonder Woman that's phenomenal, and we're all waiting for for the next one. We, yep. We've got Aquaman, which I don't understand why we haven't seen more about them making the second Aquaman yet. Like I know, right? Why Why, why did everything go well, quiet? That, that, that's probably because of uh, What's-Her-Face and Johnny Depp. Yeah, probably that was something. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and Momoa was uh, protesting something in Hawaii, so he said he wasn't going to make a movie until this got solved. He, so that happened for a while. Yeah. So, so you got, you got luck. Those two properties, which are huge. You got a Shazam movie that they are moving forward with. So I am, I am mm-hmm. happy that they're moving forward with that whole storyline, and 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 then also the Black Adam movie. Uh, but That's you got some good awesome. momentum. You got some good momentum there. And if you yeah. if you use a flashpoint, like you said, to bring them all together, bring them all together, fix up the stuff, the loose ends, you know, fix up the the mm-hmm. Batman situation. <clears throat> but man, uh, Thomas Wayne Batman. Oof. What would you would guys just think be so- about uh, twisting Flashpoint just a little bit to bring in Joaquin Phoenix's Joker? Instead, instead of, of in the Martha Wayne Joker? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Would Phoenix do it? I, don't, I mean, that's the thing. It, 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 that'd be interesting, right. but I mean... They're, they're totally saying dropped my phone. Sequel. They're saying... Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know how you do that. F. I mean, I, I, de- I mean, here's the, here's the problem, guys. Whatever they put out, I'm gonna watch. Like, <laughs> that's, that's the issue. Like, Same. yeah. This is why. This is why we're all here. Whatever they put out, I'm gonna watch. Um, no. Even if I think it's bad, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna critique it. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's a great point. Jonah Hex. That's a great yeah. point. All right. Uh, but yeah. But yeah. I don't know. It'd be. It'd be cool, Jason. It'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a different take on that. All right, let's see where are we going next. Round robin, round robin, round robin. Let's go to Caleb. <laughs> so I chose a much more obscure storyline. Awesome. Called Just Imagine. 
It's AKA Stan Lee's DC Universe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that. Just, I remember, I remember reading those when they came out as a kid, and they were just so different. Than regular DC, I, I would love this to be like an animated movie or whatever, where it's just Stan Lee's vi- vision for what DC could be. You know, absolutely. Mm. That's such a unique take. Yeah, something we haven't seen. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because those, because those, but man, it's been a long time since I read those. Right. Yeah. Right. Man. I'm trying. I'm trying. Like my brain. I think we're all kind of like going back in the Rolodex, right? Um, <laughs> right. I'm. I'm. I'm frantically googling right now. So. Yeah, I mean, I. I remember looking through those and Google may not know that. <laughs> before Google. Google. Like you're on your own. Well, John, that, did that happen during the time that uh, he and Marvel were fractured? I, I guess is the best way to. To talk about that because it's, I seem to remember those from a long time ago. Hmm. It's looking like 01. Yeah, public, publication date was 01 to 02, and there were 13 issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, like 20. Is years there ago. a synopsis there, Zach? Uh, let's see. In the original pre crisis, these characters had been previously established to exist on Earth 901. Um, oh, in the post crisis, they're on Earth six. Um, there's not a real synopsis. There's just the list of each character. Um, like Batman is Wayne Williams. Yeah, we and... got Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Green Lantern, The Flash, and the JLA is what the focus was. And then Robin, Shazam, Aquaman, Catwoman, Sandman. Hmm. I'd forgotten about Sandman. Oh wow! Very interesting. I haven't read this. I'm gonna di- I'm gonna dive into this. I would also love the DCEU to make a actual movie of the Teen Titans. Yes. Mm-hmm. And incorporate Cyborg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Not just but, you know the four. Yeah. I also had a second one. Uh, 52. Not new 52, but the old comic run of 52. Oh! Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'd be cool. That'd be a really good one. Yeah, there's so, many, there's so much potential with that one. There's so many story arcs you can follow. Yeah. So, so I'm just, I'm looking back at this because I'm, I'm really intrigued by this whole idea that Kayla brought up. Uh, uh, like I said, so I, I just found this. This is uh, like the original. This, so we're talking about Batman, okay? Uh, yeah, you said his name's Wayne Williams in this. Uh, this Batman has no superpowers. Unlike uh, Bruce Wayne, though, Wayne Williams is an African-American mm-hmm. instead of Caucasian. Uh, he is in excellent physical condition and has a vast personal fortune, allowing him to access uh, to custom equipment, including night vision lenses, Kevlar costume, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Wayne Williams' father was a policeman who was killed mm-hmm. in an ambush. Wayne is framed for a crime, so he vows revenge on hands the gang leader who set him up in prison. Williams befriends a scientist named Frederick Grant, who teaches him how to develop his mind as well as uh, sewing and bodybuilding. While incarcerated, Williams learns that his mother has also died and blames hands for her death. After rescuing the warden during a prison riot, he was given a full pardon on the outside. Cause that's how that works. Right. Yeah. You're accused right. of murder, but if you, if you save the warden, you know, you get a full part. Shawshank, yeah. Shawshank style. Yeah, exactly. He probably didn't do it then. I mean, oh, probably not. Sewing. Uh, on the outside, it's a, yeah, it's a sewing probably exactly. being too harsh. <laughs> on the outside, Williams is run from uh, is on the run from hands. So to keep a low profile, he shaves his head. Williams needs money, so he becomes a wrestler under the name of Batman. Un- uh, never unmasking in public. In a few short weeks, Batman has become a superstar in wrestling, and has become extremely wealthy. Uh, he searches for Grant. So obviously he's not working for WWE. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, he searches for Grant and entrusts him with his secret identity. Wayne Williams has the money, skill, and strength to fight hands, but Frederick Grant has the technical know-how, so the two become partners. 
To keep a low profile, Wayne gives Frederick a mansion and acts as his bodyguard. Batman eventually finds and fights with Hands, who accidentally falls to his death in the conflict, of course, because you got to kill the villain. Yeah. Uh, no longer yeah. seeking vengeance, Batman begins a mission of justice to fight crime and protect the innocent from villains like Hands. Hmm. There you go. That's a that's an interesting like this is they all have different backgrounds. They all have they all have different backgrounds. It looks like Wonder Woman's a, a an activist protesting corporate uh excavation of uh ancient Incan holy sites. Uh so there's Superman. Uh his powers include super strength, blah blah blah. Earth is too primitive, but it has the potential to develop the technology. Uh well, yeah, Superman a, was really unique. Where he's like hmm. he's part of the police force of Krypton. And... Yeah, which is so cool because that's like a whole different like they they could take creative liberties and really kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. And he didn't he, apparently he didn't come to Earth yet as a uh, as a as a baby. He was a he was part of the the Kryptonian police force, like you said, and he had a flying harness uh, <laughs> that managed to capture a dangerous dangerous criminal in a teleportation lab. However, the criminal the criminal sent. Uh, uh, Salden, who is who is Clark, Superman, and himself on a one-way trip to an insignificant little blue-green planet. So he, he came here by accident. Interesting. But yeah, they got Green Lantern. I, I, uh, this, what is this? Is, oh, this is just on Wikipedia. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'd look up this stuff because that's some, that's some interesting t- like stuff that I haven't, I don't remember all of that. You, but, you could use those to launch like an Elseworlds run of movies. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. For sure, or a Netflix series or something where yeah. you can, like yeah. change it all up. Just a little. Why not? Why not DC Universe? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, we got this streaming service that we pay for, and it was right. and like, like Disney Plus is like Disney. I love what they've done in the fact that they gathered all their stuff, and mm-hmm. they said, "Look, here it is. You want Disney stuff? You want Star Wars stuff? You want uh, mm-hmm. Marvel stuff? It's all on our platform." Here it is. DC is like, hey, this is DC Universe. It's going to be the place for all DC stuff. Isn't it great? It's pretty awesome. Ooh, squirrel. But you know what? We're (laughs) going to launch this uh, HBO thing. And so we're going to put the Green Lantern thing that should really be on the HBO thing or on the the DC thing. We're going to put that over on HBO so that you can go buy that one too. And, And it's like, that's like when we went to Universal Studios and it was like there's two different parks and it's like, hey, I want to go yeah. to Harry Potter, but we got something here and here, so you've got to get both tickets. Yeah, you know, it's, I get it from a money standpoint, but you're going to take people off. And, and right. I love DC, but like they're starting to take me off because the content is getting less and less on DC. Yeah. And more, and now all of a sudden, well, I hear about is HBO. Well, maybe they're going to merge them or something into the like CW. That. Yeah, yes. they're talking about doing away with DC Universe and making it a comics only thing and then they'll move everything to hbo max what was that zach swamp things uh i think they're in it's either official or they're in talks about moving swamp thing to cw really you mean making a second season yeah. no mm-hmm. it's just the what? it's just the first season oh, oh really oh yeah. bummer I i'm sorry but they don't have a lot of content right now because of covid mm. that's, uh, a, that's a bummer that's a shame the swamp I, thing was so good yeah. Yeah, and I was so excited to see uh, Jason Woodrow in season two as uh, the Floridic Man. Yeah. Well, it took ten, Jay- they cut three episodes uh, out of it, and then it took two. It, it took ten episodes for him to become Swamp Thing. Yeah. Right. It, it's a great origin movie, <laughs> a ten-hour <laughs> origin <laughs> movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's right, like, right. Well, you know, it's gotten good, and then all of a sudden it's gone. You know. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's well. You know, they they're putting Harley Quinn on Sci-Fi. Oh, really? Which? The first season of Harley Quinn. I don't know how they're going to do it with the language, but the yeah, first season on on Sci-Fi. So it's like, okay. Well, you know, I've watched I've watched a couple streaming things on Sci-Fi. The language. I mean, they don't they don't seem seem to care. Okay. Really? Okay. So I mean, that's probably why. Late on night it, Sci-Fi. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, um... All right. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Cool, Johnny. What you got for us? Well, I was digging deep, thinking about some of my favorite comic writers. And this, this is a story that comes from a comic writer. Uh, Peter David is uh, a fantastic writer. And 
not only did he give us some great Hulk stories, he's also written for television and, and all sorts of different adaptations. And in the early 90s, he wrote one of my favorite Star Trek The Next Generation books ever. And it is called Imzadi. And it is, it is a fantastic story. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's something that I would love to see, especially after what uh, CBS did with the Picard series, where they got to revisit some of these amazing characters. Uh, you know, Imzadi is a great storyline. If you're not a Trek person, uh, I'm sorry, you're missing out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's some good stuff yeah. there. Uh, there but like, you know, Imzadi is, is really good because it gives us, uh, you know, some really, really good Will Riker stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Jonathan Frakes is, is a great, uh, it, I think he's, he's a great piece of the Star Trek universe. Oh, absolutely. He's done some great stuff. Yep. And, and, and it, as a Frakes fan, reading that book, you know, nearly 20 <laughs> – or gosh, not just 20 he, years ago, nearly he, 30 years he ago. Did pull one of these in, in the book? Like <laughs> 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 Probably. I mean, it's – What's going on, guys? It, <laughs> the the Riker's is broken. The Riker set. The Riker set. And the it, Riker it, maneuver. It, Peter David is such a good writer. Like he really captures these characters that, uh, you know, Star Trek fans are fanatical, right? Some of them are. And so he does a really good job of capturing these characters, how they would act and how they would uh, live in this universe. And it's, it's a really, really good book. And I would love to see, uh, I'm hoping that, if it's not Imzadi, maybe there's something out there that Peter, you know, Peter David wrote some great books uh, featuring Q from the Star Trek. Oh, I love Q. I love that. I think there's, I think with the success of uh, Picard, my hope is that they'll uh, be able to revisit some more of these other uh, next generation mm -hmm. stories. And, you know, give, give people some more stuff because Imzadi is really cool. It, it's kind of like a, a long form episode of what if, you know, because, you know, you're dealing with this future here where, you know, someone has, you know, they come to find out somebody went back in time with the guardian of forever and Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? Yeah. Time travel. Time Star travel. Trek? What? Yeah, no way. Uh, Were they so, saving whales? Is that the. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> they. Oh, Boys love that about Star Trek. They got, the, they got the prime directive, which is don't interfere, and yet everybody time travels. Yeah, exactly. And they, they find ways to interfere all the time in massive ways. So it's, it, that's one of my favorite ones. And, and that's something that I would love to see come on the big screen. And then I'm also, uh, I've been really excited and I'm very hopeful. This is another literary reference. I would, I'm, I'm excited to see where the new Dune movie goes. I am a huge Dune fan. Wow. Read all those books repeatedly. Uh, and, you know. Did you like the old movie? Uh, what, the David Lynch movie? Yeah. That, 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 <laughs> that's, that's not Dune. That's, <laughs> that's Star Wars on acid. It's like just a, <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh, oy, that's just something else. Uh, Sci-fi back in the day had uh, a couple mini series where they adapted mm -hmm. uh, the first two books of the Dune series, mm -hmm. and they're pretty good. You know, yeah. there's they're they're not bad. Uh, you know, I would love to see Dune come to uh, a platform like a Netflix or an HBO Max where they can take time to build this world. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, actually, they're making a Dune. A, a series that's going to be a companion piece to the movie. Yeah, HBO Max. Yeah, Sisters because Sisters of Dune or something. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how they develop this world because that was always my hope with like the Gunslinger uh, series, you know, yeah. from Stephen mm -hmm. King. The mm -hmm. there was you know they're they're like oh yeah the Dark Tower we're going to have these movies and these companion TV shows because it's a lot like Lord of the Rings. It it, it takes place you know things like Dune and the Gunslinger Dark Tower take place in these gigantic worlds that need right. world building. And right. you know you just I, I, so I'm hopeful. 
I'm hopeful yeah. that, you know, with the rise of, you know, subscription television, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, we've seen cool stuff like Picard. Uh, we've right. seen, you know, I'm hopeful that it translates into some really cool adaptations, whether it's more Trek next generation, like, you know, like I mentioned with uh, some of Peter David's stuff like Imzadi yeah. or his IQ, uh, that'd be cool. And then, uh, you know, like I said, Dune. Dune is is awesome. And I'm hoping, I'm very hopeful that it, it gets done right this time. How do you feel about the, uh, the new Pike series that's rumored, uh, Strange New Worlds? I'm not, I, I don't know. It's, it, it should be interesting, but I, it, my fear also is that <laughs> now, uh, since there's so many avenues of everything now, that now all of a sudden we're getting all these different world building things, right? So right. it's like now Trek is going to go, now if you want to jump into Star Trek, you've got like, are you in this timeline? Are you yeah. in the Abrams universe? Are you in, uh, are you, you know, which, which canon are you in? Uh, it, that can be a little confusing. So I don't know. I mean, it makes me wonder though too, with, cause they're really pushing this Pike thing. So like our, is the cinematic Trek that Abrams and his group established, is that just gone now? I thought they were making a fourth one. I thought they didn't well, know. So uh, Quentin Tarantino before. had the rights to write a script and make a Trek movie. And then now all of a sudden, uh, that kind well, of his, was, his yeah. was something else. His was something else yeah. completely. But they were they've been trying to make a fourth one to wrap up the Kelvin timeline. Mm-hmm. Is what they've been doing. But the problem was was to wrap up the Kelvin timeline. They needed everybody to come back, and they were going to bring back uh, Chris Hemsworth, who played uh, Kirk's yeah. dad in the first right. one mm-hmm. before he so was Chris Kirk. Hemsworth. And uh, yeah. and the problem is that everybody wanted too much money. Everybody was right. like, we're demanding too much money because you got Chris Pine in there. You know, you got, which Zoe is a shame Saldana. because Zachary Quinto, yeah. dude. Yeah. Why is that guy not in more stuff? Yeah. Why isn't right. he a huge superstar? He's, he's really I good. Don't, crushed I just it don't get it. I don't understand right. why Zachary Quinto is not bigger than I even loved him as Siler and Heroes. He was awesome on Heroes. He, he was the yeah. best part of that first season of Heroes. He Absolutely. was the one we watched. He was the reason why we watched on a weekly basis because his, his Siler was so, and then they totally just cut his legs off from underneath him, and, yeah. you know, and made him this good guy and everything. It was just, oh, it was bad. But yeah. that first season of Heroes, holy cow. Oh, so good. Mm-hmm. And, and then him as Spock, like when I first Amazing. we were going to redo that, I was like, oh, come on, you know. You, but then when I heard that he was Spock and I saw it, I was right. like. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So money. good. Just take my money. And yeah. I just, I don't, get, <laughs> I don't get why people aren't doing more with him. Because he's, I don't feel that he's typecast. You know, he's no. played different. He's played different kinds of characters. He, it's funny because I, I've been watching. It, I don't know why I showed up in my YouTube feed, but uh, you know, they uh, maybe in History Channel started redoing uh, that old TV show in search of for a while. Yes, right, yes. hosted by Leonard Nimoy and everything. Well, they they brought it back, and of course, it was hosted by Zachary Quinto. And so, oh, that's fun. Yeah, so it's fun. Of course, I don't understand. They seem to have done like five episodes on the Loch Ness monster, which I'm fine with. But <laughs> you know, but still, yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, they're, I, they're still looking. Going back to the start. One day, four, man. They're still doing that. They got a new director, uh, the guy who did who did the Legion show. Oh, okay. For oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And all the actors are confirmed. Chris Pine took a pay cut. Okay. Yeah, as long as I can get that, I mean, because I because that was been the plan was to kind of wrap up that Calvin right timeline mm-hmm. neatly, so that so that you could just in, envelop it and fold it into everything and have one get rid of the Back to the Future, you know, fragmented <laughs> timeline. Well, thing. And, and that's the thing. I mean, there's so many. You know, thinking about my the first thing I had said, you know, with with Peter David, you know, and his Imzadi novel and the other stuff he's written, like he's such a great writer there are so many things that he's written for comic books and other media that just could be, uh, could be adapted. Like, and, and I just, you know, I don't know. I don't know if there's a reason that he hasn't written more scripts for, 
for some of his work or not. But I think, like, I mean, he's one of the guys that helped to give us some of the Grey Hulk runs and and mm. stuff like that way back in the day. So it's, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd like to see more of his stuff out there. So. Very, very good. Very, very good. Well, one of our members was called away to some distant space fight thing. I think he's got to go fight a big fart cloud somewhere near the sun. Yikes. But uh, other than that, we, the rest of the council is still here. And so now, Jason, we go to you. You All right. I am going to go with Emperor Joker. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think that story has so many different avenues to explore. Um, and it brings in so much of the DC universe in such a weird way um, that it would be so much fun to see it on screen. And it has, um, and I don't want, you know, it's like Inu says, I don't want this to be like Superman only, but I, it has one of, I think, Superman's best moments in it um, when he agrees with Spectre to take all the pain that, that Batman is feeling after that storyline into him mm-hmm. to, to save mm-hmm. the bat. Because, um, you know, when, I'm sure we all know Spectre's like, it's going to destroy him. It won't, he won't come back from this. And then Superman says... It's it's not ending this way for, for the bat. Put it on me. That kind of sacrifice and friendship really epitomizes uh, the nobility of the character. So on top of that, it's just a, a wacky, crazy, mm-hmm. out-of-this-world story yeah. that I think would make a great movie. Yeah. And it'd be cool to see how you know, how many different ways they can torture and kill Batman at Emperor right. Joker's whim mm-hmm. on a daily right. basis. Right. Yeah. Uh, that'd be, that'd be cool. I, it, yeah, that, that'd be cool because to see a, a, an all powerful villain like that in charge, because he's got, uh, whose powers does he take? Uh, Mr. 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 Spitlick. Mitchell Plick. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah. And he, yeah, that's oh man. He gets ninety nine percent of uh, Mixie's powers and proceeds to do everything you would think the Joker would do. Mm. Now, see, that's interesting because I'm not. I, I'll be honest with you, I am not familiar with that storyline. Yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting storyline. Uh, like I said, he tricks uh, Mixie into giving him ninety nine percent of his powers, which of course, for a all powerful being from the fifth dimension is considerable in the third dimension. So yeah. he, he warps all of reality to, uh, to his kind of twisted desires and needs. And, and at one point, like he eats all of the people in China just so he can make a bad Chinese food joke. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. Yeah. When did this comment come out? Oh, uh, gosh. Ago? Pre COVID nineteen, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's like ten or fifteen years old, maybe. Okay. Um, and he he tortures Batman and kills him every single day, but decides he can't live without him, so he keeps bringing him back. Um, and the problem for the Bat is he, after all of this is over, um, Superman stops uh, Joker. And after it's all over, Batman remembers everything that happened to him. Ooh. Every single thing that the Joker did, he, he hasn't forgotten. And you just see this scene, they're on like a, it's almost like a, like a cliff overlooking Ireland or something like that, that kind of viewpoint. And the bat is just on his knees. And you can see the burden, that's uh, the weight of all that on him. And it's, you can see him breaking in each panel. Man. And like I said, that's, that's when the specter shows up um, and Superman's just like, come on, Bruce, you got to pull it together. We need you. I need you. Don't, you, you've got to come out of this. And the specter tells him it's going to break him. There's no way he comes mm. out of this. It will destroy him. And like I said, that's when Superman, he's, he basically, he's like, I'm not going to let the Joker do this to Batman. Not him. I won't let the Joker win this way. I, you, what can we do? And he said the only Spectre basically says the only thing that can be done is if those memories are taken from the bat and put on someone else. And that's when Superman says, "Put them on me. I will take them." Wow! Mm. Wow! It's an it's it's an incredibly powerful payoff to what at that point was like I said it's kind of a a wacky 
trippy, like the art is really trippy and mm -hmm. distorted and everything like that because it's all coming out of the Joker's mind and everybody's there. You know, Harley Quinn is there and 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 Wonder Woman is there and he's you know he's he's killed like half the league and he makes like the the other half of the league be his servants and stuff like that. So it's it's all this twisted Joker stuff. Um, mm. and the, and the, oh, somehow the only one that it doesn't really impact is Superman. Um, mm. so he's got to be the one, basically he, he tells the Joker he's got to give up his power because he can't actually kill the bat. He can't live with killing Batman. So mm. there's no point in having the power anymore. And Joker's like, well, you're right. And then and Superman and, and, and Mixie get the power back from Joker. Wow. Mm. wow! It's a crazy story. Dang, it's a, it's I'm, a, I'm gonna it's have to a, read that. Yeah, yeah, it's a super crazy story. Um, and I, you know, the my, I, how you come up with a story like that is beyond me. But yeah, it, to sure. to see it play out on would screen be awesome. would be awesome. Wow, that would be like Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, like times ten in comics. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be, cool. it'd be a cool one for them to to do with the DC animated stuff. I think that they've done. I think they could. Definitely. I mean, I it, live action would be cool, but I mean, I think Either. the trippiness would would translate well into like, right. animated fair, maybe. Wow, that uh, that sounds powerful, man. I, that, like that. That's honestly the first that I have actually heard of that storyline. And that just sounds, he's probably going to read it while I'm finishing up my work day. I'm telling you that I'm going to have to look that up. Cause that, that just sounds fantastic. It's a think, great story. I think it's on comics unlimited. If you have that or something. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. I'd be interested to, I'd be interested to hear what your take on it is. Cause the first time I read it, I was like, what am I reading? This is so weird, but it's so weird in a great way. Yeah. Hmm. It looks like there's a it looks like there's a Batman Brave and the Bold episode where it happens that features Batmite, um, so that might be worth checking out just for fun. I'm sure. I think it, it's the episode's called Emperor Joker, so it's probably inspired by it. Hmm. I don't think. Yeah. So. Well, I know on Brave and the Bold they did a lot of um, like deep cuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they brought in a lot of stuff that like only. And I think that they had to do that because it was it was kind of presented like it was kind of kitty, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But and kind of tongue in cheek, but like you said, they they did some of those things on there that you were like, oh, every once in a while you see something go, man, that they're doing that on this show. This is right. That's pretty right. impressive. Right. That's pretty impressive. Well, man, that those are uh, those are great choices, uh, Jason. Man, you guys are just full of great choices today. Just just awesome stuff. Well. Mine, I went back and forth because uh, there's just there's so many great storylines and so many great things. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, Johnny went, you know, with the literary uh, thing. And if, if I went that way, I would have to go with Timothy Zahn's Star Wars novels. Um, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I, I just love those. I just think that they captured Star Wars and and, you know, now they're not even canon. You know, I guess Long they were series. canon, but... Yeah. I just started reading the Thrawn series again the other day. So, oh man, it's like I, I've got the books, I've got the audio book, I've got you know, it's just right right now. I know a guy who is actually making it chapter by chapter in in digital animation. Oh, nice, cool. And I've been loving that. Uh, so that that's a big one for me. Um, there's a, there is an old Superman story that I think would just be cool to see. It's called Time and Time Again. Oh, absolutely that's a really cool story where he goes back in time and he's trying to find his, he's trying to get his way back to, uh, to our time. It's been a long time since I've read it, but it was really cool on the, uh, dur during the whole thing. It's got a little Superman and he's like flying and it's like, he starts off on one side and with each new, uh, issue, he's going across the top of the, uh, of the, of the <laughs> cover. And so oh, that's yeah. cool. cool. But so the one though that I'm going to focus on and I'm just going to, I'm going to commit to uh, is just because it's, it's a very special one to me. And I know that for some people, this will be generic, but it, for me, it's, it's special because it's, it's, I was always a, a superhero fan, but I was never really a reader of comics growing up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually read the comics. I didn't collect comics um, until I was about 16 years old. 
And something happened when I turned 16 because I was always a huge Superman fan, and that is they killed Superman. They, Superman yeah. And when they killed yeah. Superman, I'll be honest with you, even when they killed Superman, I didn't read it. What happened was, was I was at a mire one night at about three in the morning because that's what we did when we were like 16. We had no other place to go, and so we just <laughs> went to Meyer. Right? We went to Meyer. <laughs> and so they, that was when the comic book boom really started happening in the early 90s, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody, yeah. you know, comics were everywhere, and Meyer had this whole section all of a sudden of comic books and comic book supplies and everything else. And um, they had the trade paperback to the death of Superman. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And it was five bucks, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick that up. Just thought it'd be cool, you know. It's got Lois Lane, you know, holding Superman on the cover, all bloody and everything. So I picked it up, and I remember we, we were, we were doing laundry that night because the washing machine had broken, and that's why we were out so late. So the laundromat was like right there next to it. So while we're sitting there, like I start reading this thing, and that was the first time I realized that comics were like not for kids anymore. Like that it wasn't mm -hmm. just for little kids or whatever. It wasn't just this cheesy cartoony thing that like, wow, this is a good story. Like, yeah. and I didn't, you know, and like I'm jumping into this story, not really knowing, you know, like some of these, you know, what the Justice League was at that point, you know, the Justice League of America, because like Blood right. Rain was in there and there was just like a bunch of, you know, Blue Beetle and like some other characters. Booster Gold. Booster Gold, yeah. And so like, I didn't know who those guys even were. Maximum. Like I, start, I start reading this thing and I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. And, you know, just that, that story of how Superman got involved with Doomsday and everything. And that just this character that came out of nowhere and, you know, then they kill him. And so like, I finished this book and I'm like, I got to know what happens next. Like, where does this go? And so like, I went back and I found back issues for funeral for a friend. Right. And so like, I bought all a funeral for a friend read all those and like you see just these powerful moments where these superheroes are paying homage to Superman and what he meant to the community and, and all those things. And I was like, okay, well then what next? And there was nothing. And I was like, well, where is it? And I know for a while, you know, they, they kind of had that, that fake out where, where we didn't know if there were going to be any more Superman books for a while and stuff because they were crafting that story and putting that story together. And then reign of the Superman hit. And that was when I committed to collecting comics for like the longest time because that story, because it was a weekly story, you know, that was told over four Superman books at the time. They were all yeah. numbered. You could know where you were at in, in the storyline. If there was, if there was another book, like, like Green Lantern got brought in and I think Starman got brought in at one point. And so like you, it, it connected, you know, uh, Justice League connected. And so you knew which ones were which. And just reading that whole storyline to the end of Death of Superman, to the death, funeral, and return of Superman, uh, that, that's what grabbed me yeah. and, and, and just made me appreciate comics as, as a form. And from there, you know, I started reading other titles. I had a buddy at the time. We'd go to the comic book shop. He was a big Marvel fan. He loved Wolverine. And so he loved Wolverine and Spider-Man. So he'd buy Wolverine and Spider-Man. I'd buy Superman. And we'd read each other's comics. And, you know, and it was, it was just awesome. We were 16 and we didn't have any money. Barely had money for gas. Uh, but, you know, like, that was my thing, man. For a couple of years, like, I was, I was dead set into that. And so I know that, you know, there's been – there was the attempt – years ago and they did the death of Superman animated movie, which yeah. let's not talk about that. It's not, it's not that story. You know what I mean? Like right. it's, it's got doomsday in it and it's got Superman in it, but it's not that story. It's a different, That's it, yeah. it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. And then even last year with them doing death of Superman and reign of the Superman, I was, I was hopeful. I was really mm -hmm. hopeful that we were going to get something. I was like, Oh no way. They're going to do this. And I should have known with the first images that came out because when they when they're showing Superman as the new Fifty Two Superman, which I have my own issues with, but right. you know they're showing the Superman as the new Fifty Two Superman instead of the classic Superman that we love and that I knew from that time. Like, who's that movie for? Right? It's supposed to be for people who right. love that storyline. So, like, yeah. why mm -hmm. why change it? I just don't understand that, and I don't get that. That like every time we've seen it portrayed now, it's different yeah like i i loved it the way it is i want to see some i don't know if i even need it in in live action or or whatever i mean live action mm -hmm. i think it'd just be too huge it's it's right it, it encompasses way too much obviously the story took you know a year uh 
You know what I mean? It, it was, yeah. it was just, it was just really, really big. Mm-hmm. But I want to see something. I want to see that done justice. Right. No pun intended. Uh, from a storyline point where it's like you get invested in the characters because that Reign of Superman thing, I wasn't invested in Steel. I wasn't invested in Superboy. I wasn't invested in Eradicator. Nothing. But if you read the comics, and I know the books are always better than, you know, whatever. <laughs> but there was just no connection, I guess, for mm-hmm. me. And it's like yeah. I have it. It's, it's there. I've watched it. It's cool for what it is. But right. I would just love, love to see something adapt uh, – that and make it the right way yeah Mm -hmm. well it was such a it's such an iconic storyline now i mean when it i I, i'm sure you remember when it first came i mean it was on the news it was Mm -hmm. it was such a it, it tapped into the cultural zeitgeist so much that um to see it done i'm i'm right there with you to see it done justice would be spectacular because it is such a great story. Yeah. It's, it's not just the death of Superman. I mean, that, that was shocking in and of itself or, you know, Kryptonian sleep heal, healing coma or whatever they called yeah. it. Um, yeah. But it was just the storyline itself is, is so good that if we, if, if we could just get it right, it would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there was so much companion stuff that went along with it, like like the Superman uh, Doomsday Hunter Prey series. Yeah, where, where mm-hmm. Superman takes Doomsday to the end of time because that's the only way you're going to beat him, and just drops right. him off there like a half second before time ends, and just like bloop, gone. That's how we're going to beat him. Uh, Have fun with that. Yeah, you know, um, it's yeah, it's just. I mean, even watching Batman versus Superman, and all of a sudden, you know, like I was so hoping that Doomsday wasn't going to be a part of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I when I started hearing the rumors, I was like, no, 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 it's too early, you know. And then like, right. you know, and then when they brought him in, I was glad at least that they did kill Superman, that they had the yeah. guts to kill Superman. If you're going to bring Doomsday, in, you know, because we just we just finished, we're on season ten of Smallville with our boys, mm-hmm. and you know, we just got through the season where we had Doomsday on Smallville, right? And it's like, eh, really? Yeah. Turn Doomsday into the Hulk, basically an evil Hulk. You know, yeah. or a dude turns into Doomsday when he gets angry. Um, they just, I just feel like, I don't know if any of you watched Krypton. Mm-hmm. Um, Krypton yeah, is actually really it. good. Um, yeah, I'm, still in, I'm still in the second season, but like their version of Doomsday is probably the, the best on screen on. version of Doomsday you're going to get. I mean, yeah, right. It looks fantastic. And it makes sense that they brought him on to Doomsday because it's a prequel and it talks about the scientists who created Doomsday and stuff. So that, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I just, I'd like to see them do it in a proper way that, that tugs on my heartstrings the way that original story did, you know? Yeah. Right. Because I mean, and the way Doomsday was treated in, in BVS was we've got to give them something to fight together. Right. Right. And so it's right. Just, it was like, oh come on, and it, man! They could have brought in any. I mean, it would have just been number. better if, if, if. I mean, I don't know if they just didn't bring a resurrected. You know, it would have been better if it was like Bizarro Superman. Bizarro, yeah, you yeah. know, like mm-hmm. like that he had to fight because that would have made more sense. Yes, right. Know, for it to be like a Bizarro Superman or a Bizarro Zod that they resurrect, and not just like it, it's just like. Really, you mm-hmm. wasted Doomsday like this. I mean, or even, or even start with Bizarro and then transition to Steppenwolf, and that sets up for Justice League. Yes, it or, could have been cool. Oh, I like, like that. For sure, bring mm. bring in bring in an uh, an apocalyptic guy like 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 Steppenwolf or Calabac that is a, a mm-hmm. physical threat that would then set up the Dark Side story that we all want. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, something linear that works together and then you can get, right. it, you know, um, but we've talked about that. I think that that part of that problem is, is just they wanted to get there yeah, right, right. away too fast. Mm-hmm. And it's, just, it's just too fast. But yeah, so that's yeah. that's that's my one that is like I, it's just it's just always in the back of my mind somewhere that like even I'll be honest because I've, I've got the Sega Genesis game like even the Sega Genesis game gets it right. 
Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like if you play that game, like yeah. I, I remember when I started playing it because it had a, it had a continue on it if you died, and it and it was really hard at first. So every time I die and I'd be done for the night. I'd leave the game system on. I did it for like three days. I left the game system on and I, so I could go back and continue so that I wouldn't die and have to start all over at the beginning. Um, but, you know, it follows the storyline really, really well from the comic. Yeah. And, and that's just what I'd like to see, you know. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's a lot of us, you know, like we see things about that a lot that we just – there's a reason why we fall in love with this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You Definitely. know, I don't understand why writers and, and directors and people feel like they got to change it to make it their own. It's like. I think, I think part of it is to make it cool for the younger generation, but it, they also need to um, make, make a nod to, to the older, older generation as well mm -hmm. <clears throat> because of the comics. Well, yeah. And they want to, they want to appeal to as many people as possible. Right. Yeah. So, but the problem is, is that, you're taking material that was written for a specific audience and then now you're going to try and change it for a wider audience, which I think is where we run into a lot of the problems we saw, like who would you have cast differently and yeah. mm -hmm. like that. And then and, and some of the things we want to see adapted, you know, uh, are going to have that problem. You know, they're written for a very specific audience and the people in charge want to make as much money as possible mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah like, exactly realize that this is considered a classic and that we don't necessarily right. have to change it up for them <laughs> yeah right yeah Sorry. well the trouble alert is going off ladies and gentlemen <laughs> we, 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 have, we have to go but hey guys thanks i know it's been a little bit longer if you guys stayed to the end of this video you guys are official members of, of the council and you guys are awesome you guys Thank are you. are uh our superheroes. Yeah. But, um, thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, and thanks to Caleb who had to go. Uh, it's always good to talk to you guys. And I, I can't wait till, cool. till we have another topic that we dive into and dissect and, and share our thoughts on. Hey, again, uh, you guys like subscribe, share this video with other people. Cause there's a lot of other nerds just like us who love this kind of stuff and love these kind of discussions. And, uh, we want you to be a part of it. So, uh, so do those things. And, uh, also, Make sure to, to tune in the next time that we do one of these shows, all right? And hit, uh, go ahead and uh, leave comments and, and hit us all up on social media and all that good stuff so that we can keep the conversation going long after the video is done. That's what I like saying. <laughs> so, long after the video is done, we're going to be having conversations like this. So, uh, so still be going all right, guys. Well, with that, thanks once again. And this session of the Poindexter Council is now been closed. Until next time. Bye-bye. Yeah.